Here we are. Here we are. Talking about Wahoo again. Wahoo. Um, it's almost did Wahoo we, time. Did we get any new uh, information on this one? We got a lot we, of new we information. We had Rich in at one point. Yeah, we, about Wahoo. It, was, it was actually really good. You know, we, we looked at what Rich had talked about and tried to fill in some of the gaps. This one was really focused on kind of like that inshore Wahoo bite. Kevin actually said uh, he's caught way more Wahoo trolling at seven knots than he has at like 15 or 18 knots. Yeah, he, I, I kind of overheard it. He said it could be a bit of a bycatch yeah. sometimes, which I didn't realize. Yeah, he said that if you, you know, if you want to just target Wahoo, like, yes, you should just cover more miles, so you're going to be going faster, but Wahoo will readily bite, you know, if you, if you throw a deep diver or anything like that into a spread, you can hook a Wahoo pretty much anywhere where you're trolling for tuna, so. No way. Yeah, pretty cool. Cool. Let's uh, let's learn a little bit more about fishing for Wahoo. So Wahoo are another warm water species that come up to the Cape in the summer with the warm Gulf Stream current. They'll typically be found on temperature breaks, strong temperature breaks, uh, where you have clean blue water pushing against colder green water on the inshore grounds. They will come in close to shore into 20 fathoms, especially around structure. Uh, we used to have the weather buoys south of the lanes that were great offshore structure. Unfortunately, they pulled them up last year and brought them down to North Carolina. So anytime you find a floating log or lobster traps, it's always a good spot to look for Wahoo. Anytime you find bait, the bait can be the structure. So if you find schools of skipjack along with your big eye and your yellowfin, you're also going to find Wahoo. They love eating the chub mackerel. If you find schools of chub mackerel offshore, you'll find them flying fish as well. Um, while trolling for Wahoo isn't super common up here, they're typically a incidental catch. Most of them are probably caught on deep divers and like a heavy weighted ballyhoo, something like a Joe shoot or an Islander. Um, if you're targeting Wahoo, you can target them at six, seven knots like you would for tuna, but the name of the game is covering a lot of water. You want to find an area with a hard temperature break and a lot of structure, and you want to troll quickly just to cover water. Some people will say that there's a bit of a reaction strike you get, and the Wahoo do chase fast moving bait, so it makes sense. But we've caught a lot more Wahoo at seven knots than we have at 15. There's a lot of new inshore structure coming in, and as the wind farms develop, as long as they don't kick us out of the area and allow us to fish close by, I think that's gonna be a really cool opportunity for people to go inshore, either trolling for tuna and catching a Wahoo by accident, or just trolling by quickly on their way south to target tuna. You can, you know, if your boat cruises at 20 knots, then there's nothing stopping you from throwing a plug out for your whole ride south. So a good catch-all spread will include some lures that can catch Wahoo. Typically on a shotgun bait, you're going to be trolling a heavy uh, ballyhoo on a Joe shoot. Wahoo will love to eat far away from the boat, something down deep. Um, on my long riggers, I'm typically pulling ballyhoo, whether it's on an islander or a chugging head. Wahoo typically will eat a subsurface bait more readily than they'll eat a surface bait, like a, um, like a chugging lure. Um, they love deep divers. I'll usually keep a deep diver at least around sunrise and sunset looking for Wahoo and Big Eye. I'll keep a deep diving plug like the Nomad uh, right off the corner on the flat line. They will eat spreader bars. I haven't personally landed one on a spreader bar, but I know people that have. I've had the incidental bite off. You never know if it's a Wahoo or a Mako shark, but anything that looks like a mackerel or a small tuna is going to get bit. Um, blacks and purples, pinks, oranges uh, are all popular colors for Wahoo. They'll eat blue and white. I've had them eat blue and white islanders. I've had them eat green machines. DTX 220 is my all-time favorite. I like to keep this on the corner all the time. I've caught yellowfin, big eye, bluefin, Wahoo, and blue marlin on this plug. In addition to the DTX, the Mad Max is a great plug, stays down well, can be trolled a little bit faster than the DTX. It's very similar to the Yozuri Bonita. Um, it stays a little bit truer than the Bonita. The Bonita has a wider swim to it. Um, the Mad Scad is another Nomad plug that's really good for Wahoo, usually in a larger size than this. And the benefit of the Mad Scad is that it stays up and it doesn't dig as hard. So you can actually run this out of your riggers. Um, these will stay down, you know, maybe 10 feet, whereas the DTX is diving to 50 feet. Um, if you're not a big fan of hard lures, a lot of people don't like playing with treble hooks. Um, an Islander with a Ballyhoo is a great lure, especially if you can pull it behind a planer. Um, any skirted lure that will stay down deep, this is a weighted metal head, so this is going to stay down deep in the spread. Um, another way that we like to rig the Islanders is actually with a squid skirt loaded up with eight ounces of lead. So this is a stiff rig of cable 
with the Islander over the squid and a 10-0 J-hook.